Hello, VNVs, and welcome back to another episode of Dream Daddy. You enjoy that? Good. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. So, we're just back from our first date with Damien. I think we got two more dates to go before it like becomes official how this game puts it. I'm not exactly sure, but we're back at our house. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull up through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple letters and a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple tries for them to get it in. Kappa. Hey! My coupons! I take a closer look at the large yellow envelope. Hmm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? <laughs> I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Come back later. Okay. I just thought you want this big old envelope we got from he he The hell is he ya? It's probably a school, and it's a big envelope, so it's probably an acceptance letter. Hey. Immediately, Amanda pushes her door open. Horn, <laughs> horn is to do for the arts? Question mark. I mean, if you're busy, I can come back later. <laughs> Father, please! Why is he everything in capitals? Stop. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. It's probably bad for your teeth. Is it? Tearing open an envelope bad for your teeth? I'm pretty sure there are, like, harder foods out there that I've... Jawbreakers, for an instance. I'm pretty sure that's worse for your teeth than ripping open an envelope, but who am I to judge? She doesn't seem to hear me and, splits out, and spits out a piece of the envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds huh. it. And... The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. It's a big envelope. How schools work, for those of you who haven't gone to college yet, this is how this works. If you get an envelope in the mail and it's a small white envelope from a school, you got denied. They don't need to give you a whole welcome package. They just need to say, you fucked up. Try again. <laughs> but if you get the big yellow envelope, that's why you're accepted. Here is all the paperwork and info you need. So you know right away before even opening the thing if it's accepted or not. The small white one is denied. The big yellow one is accepted. You're welcome. I just saved you a lot of suspense and hassle in the future. Don't even need to open the white envelope if you get it. You're just like, oh, denied. Done. <clears throat> Amanda's face is unreadable. Huh? I can't believe this. She's pulling a fast one on me. Oh, honey. It's okay if you didn't. <laughs> I got in! I, I knew it. I told you. Oh! I got in! Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god. I really can't believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. You have to say that. You're her dad. Oh. Wait. Dad? Mm. I know this one's really expensive and it's so far away. Oh yeah, no, if it's expensive, we broke AS, we broke AF, you ain't going nowhere. I think for a moment. Hiya! Hiya! It's <laughs> one of the most, more expensive schools that Amanda applied to. But I know she's had her heart set on it for the longest time. It'll be tough. But we're gonna make it work. Especially if we go with Damien. Have you seen his house? Dude's loaded. Hmm. Really? Of course! Amanda hugs me again. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice, wherever you want. <laughs> wherever? Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos. Tearing. <laughs> tearing. Tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos from a nearby food truck. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Cost was not a determining factor. Please, Dad, you know I'm a simple gal. Just give me a Rito with a view. A Rito with... Is that Rito? Rito? I'm so used to saying Rito just because of Riot Games. I have no idea if I'm saying that right or not. Probably not. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the day. Hey. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes and there are all these galleries nearby and there's a discount if you bring your student ID and... Amanda, slow down. You're gonna choke on your burrito. I know. I'm just excited. Did I mention the students get their own studio space once they're seniors? And we all get the professional photo editing software for free? Wish that happened for me when I went to school. I had to pay 800 fucking dollars for my program. For my software. That- Side note. I went to a school called Center for Arts and Technology and I went for studio production and live sound. Now, 
the Center for Arts and Technology doesn't just do audio. It did like web design and web security and digital art and fashion and um, a little bit of veterinary and stuff as well. They did a bunch of different programs. Audio was just one of their programs. What pissed me right the fuck off was that I went to the audio engineering program. We needed two primary programs for our schooling. We needed final, or no, sorry, we needed Logic Pro X, which is an audio program, and we needed um, Pro Tools, which I think at the time I went was the latest was Pro Tools 10. Now it's Pro Tools 12, but at the time it was Pro Tools 10. We needed both of those programs in order to do any of our assigned work. And of course, all the school, all the computers at the school had them. So if you ever wanted to do homework, you had to go to the school to do the homework. But <sighs> the people in the digital arts field that were like designing video game characters or stuff like that, they every single student got a free two thousand dollar laptop with with the programs like. My mother's, my mother's calling me. I'll continue this rant in a second. The people and the students that were in the digital arts program for making video game characters and stuff like that, they got free $2,000 laptops with the programs they needed, like Maya and um, I think Photoshop is another one and a bunch of other different modeling programs, all included and pre-installed onto their computer. And they did not have to return them at the end of the year or anything. They were theirs to keep which pissed me and a lot of other audio students off to no end because like us audio students we had to be able to a have a computer that can run these programs b then fork out two hundred dollars for logic and eight hundred dollars for pro tools on top of the computer just so we can have enough uh, computer to run these programs and these digital art students got all this shit for free included with their curriculum oh it, it pissed me right the fuck off it's nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about it. hey yeah, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bits of her burrito. Bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed. You fucked up. I wonder who my roommates are gonna be. You take a survey online and they match you with someone with a familiar major and interest. I bet we're gonna be best friends. I'd bet not. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Don't even get me started on bad roommates. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. I did. I had three. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig b brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story that our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. How the hell did you pull that off? Carl ruled. All right. Ooh, they let you have animals in the dorms? Did you get a note saying you need one? I bet I could forge one. I think I could get a rabbit. Or maybe a snake. Or maybe both. Will the snake eat a rabbit, though? I mean, if you let the snake and the rabbit next to each other, yes, probably. Oh, boy. I think I'll leave that all up to you. Yeah, I'm taking no responsibility for that. She's so excited. I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know I had to talk with Mr. Vega. Hmm. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he? <laughs> what? No, but you're going to fucking tell me about the dumpster fire now. Hmm? I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money. You know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder. Right you will! I'm broke as fuck! I pat her on the back. Think you can handle the 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays? There's gonna be some Tetris ice roads to cross. Oh. I'm referencing that thing again. You don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences. Well. It'll be worth it if I get to see you. Aw, thanks so much. My eyes immediately well up with tears. Okay, it wasn't that sentimental. Oh, Dad, don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. You're all grown up now, and you're such a good person, and I hope you know how important you are to me. Dad, stop. You're going to make me cry, too. It's too late, honey. It's happening. <laughs> Dad, I can't get tears in my burrito. It's going to make it taste sad. Uh, that's not how taste. That's not how taste or tears work. I pull Amanda in for a hug and kiss her on the forehead. Mm. Love you, kiddo. <laughs> Love you too, pops. That was a nice sentimental moment. Welcome. Hey, got dads. Back at dad book. All right, Damien, my man. Um, is this all the same? I think this is all the same now. Yeah, all the same. Okay. 
Got a message, Damien. Blood. I still don't know if it's Blood March or Blood Mark. Blood Mark sounds better. I'm gonna go, we're gonna go with Blood Mark for the remainder of this playthrough. Treat people better than they treat you. What if they treat me like a god? How do I treat them better than that? I had a lot of fun hanging out with Damien the other day. I wonder what he's up to. Yeah, I had a lot of fun breaking his gargoyle statue and then putting it together in less than 30 seconds. I still don't understand how the f that happened. Either the breaking of the gargoyle or repairing it in under 30 seconds. What? Moving on. I open up Dad book and start writing him a message when Amanda walks in the door. Dad, you got a letter. Oh, is it from Grandma? Huh? No, it's from Damien. Ah, Damien uses handwritten letters. Yes, a man after my own heart, like IRL. Handwritten letters are so much more personal than typed ones or emails or any of that bullshit. Ah, I love it. How did Damien know my address? It's the one question I have. Everything else, mm, love it. Whoa, can I see it? Amanda hands me a piece of old parchment, folded into an envelope and sealed with purple wax. Yes! Damn, the dude goes all out. That's yes! Yes, yes, yes! That is how I want to send letters. I don't have the money to set, to get like a wax thing, but I, can you get wax? Yes, you can, because I've seen like Hand of the King ones after Game of Thrones with wax stuff. I'm sure I could probably get a, Oh my god! I wonder if I could get a custom, like, wingless Valkyrie wax seal? Oh, dude, if I can do that, that would be... Mmm! I bet you anywhere online there's gonna be something like that. That would be... That would be cool. I would send out... I would write letters to all of my friends and just wax... Yes! Anyways, moving on! I pry off the seal and unfold the letter. It is in the most beautiful calligraphy the letter reads. It's probably in frickin', like, quill pen writing whatever that's called knew it i friggin knew it look at that look at that dearest torsten i hope you'll find my continued correspondence endearing rather than trying <laughs> one can only hope that we that my use of the slower more traditional form of communication will showcase my sincere and earnest sentiment that i greatly enjoyed our time together <laughs> i write this hastily under the warm embrace of excitement, fearful that I may misstep and speak towards something unwelcome. For now, I hope that you might forgive my boldness. I will simply say that your company has greatly occupied my thoughts. While the afternoon may have been derailed by forces unforeseen, your companionship helped a great deal. Not only in the discipline of my child, but in the moral of my spirit. And for that, I thank you. That said, Torsten, if you will allow me, it would mean the world to me if I could enjoy more of your time. Perhaps a trip to the cinema, followed by a moonlit stroll, would be to your taste. I eagerly await your response. With great respect, D. Bloodmark. Man, I'm gonna use the last part of that message, because I never, th like, I always, I always think, like, yeah, let's go to the movies, or maybe we can get, like, a hot chocolate before the movies or anything. But next time I invite someone to the movies, someone that I'm interested in, I'm gonna word it like this in that kind of way because that is not the way that you say it where is it here um yeah P perhaps a trip to the cinema followed by a moonlit stroll would be to your taste now some of you are probably being like no don't say that that's cheesy but um person i am currently speaking to and we're hanging out quite a bit would enjoy this kind of thing because we've talked like this back and forth and it's been fun so i think in 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 the sense in the in the position that i'm in right now this would work moving on i like it man and i both look up from the letter mm. wow he's good mm. so you're gonna catch a movie with him no we're going to go to the cinema dear <laughs> yeah i better message him on dad book and let him know no 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 you write him a handwritten letter back for Christ's sakes Amanda slaps my laptop shut Amanda knows what's up Amanda's like nah you son of a bitch you gonna be writing a handwritten fucking letter you have to write him back a real letter damn right Amanda damn right but my handwriting looks like two toddlers fighting over a crayon it's okay my handwriting looks like that too my normal writing looks like that yeah dad you have to he wrote you a letter that's so cool. Will you help me? I need to class this up. <laughs> yeah, like the first time he wrote a big thing and you were like, Hey, yeah, sounds cool. Let's do it. <laughs> it's like, you dunce cap. 
felt that I was made for this. Here's what you do. Find tickets to a show that you two will like, then enclose them in the letter. Oh, that's classy. Man and I hop onto my laptop and pursue showtimes. He doesn't seem like a romantic comedy kind of guy. You'd be surprised because we didn't know, we thought he was all like mystic and kind of like gothic Victorian era kind of thing. And then you go into his library and he has Naruto fan fiction. So can we really judge what kind of movies he likes secretly? I don't think we can. Yes. Oh, here's one. Vampire Crusade 2. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> Evil never dies. Okay, that's kind of a cheesy line. I don't know. That sounds kind of stupid. Ah, yeah, kind of hmm. Actually, it's a critically acclaimed exploration into the in Ennui? Ennui? I don't know what that is. Of existence. It really turns the vampire trope on its head. Really? Hmm. Nah, there's just a lot of blood and vampire titties. <laughs> oh, count me in! Let's go! Well, let's roll the dice. I purchase the tickets and print them out. Then sit down at the table with the man to try and draft a nice letter. I start writing. Damien. <laughs> hey. <laughs> good morrow to you on this fine eve. I do hope that this letter finds you in good health. I do hope that this letter finds you in good health. Good one. What's next? Hey, remember when your son tried to cast <laughs> You been good? I must confess of my amateur control of the written word. Jeez, Dad, have some faith in yourself. Okay, we're trucking along. Let him know how you're feeling. You find me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. I did very much enjoy the adventure we found ourselves on the last we met. That earnest shit was pretty messed up. <laughs> I love that we're starting out like perfect and going well and then we can just slip in and just be like, that earnest shit was pretty messed up. <laughs> just completely just like, whoa, what are you doing? Uh, let's go, let's yeah. go. Nice. Mm. Ask him to hang out already. True art takes time, Amanda. Yeah, did you see how much he talked before he asked me if he wanted to go to the cinema? Like, come on, girl, relax. While a strange turn of events, I found myself enormous of the situation at hand. Like Bruegel's landscape with the fall of Icarus. I find myself lost in your details. That's a little too much. Let me, uh, get it that. <laughs> yes! Let me, uh, get it that. <laughs> I really want to say this kind of thing, but I really don't <laughs> at the same time. Let's change your mouse up in order to switch your hand. Bring it home, pops. Let me take you out. I got two tickets to the movies. Just to tie it all off. I would very much enjoy your company. Accompany me. I would very much enjoy your company. Accompanying me to the cinema. It would bring me great pleasure to escort you to the cinema. It would bring me great pleasure to escort you to the cinema. <laughs> Smooth. Calling it the cinema is a classy move. He called it the cinema, so... It's a fair point. It's fair enough. Enclosed, you'll find two tickets to Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies. Which I'm sure you will find both titillating and enjoyable. Best wishes, hard dabs. <laughs> oh, dabs. Okay, I thought that's a dabs for a second. I was like, hard dabs. Yeah, just hard dabs. Torsten. <laughs> Namaste. We'll carry on. Best wishes. And then I sign my name. My full name. Fancier that way. Torsten Nogol. Uh. Is this okay? Man, it reads over my sloppy handwriting. <laughs> nice. It's just boring ass paper. And really, like, crunchy-looking handwriting, not even quill. But, I mean, it, it works. It's, it, it, it works. It's good enough. <laughs> you spelled his name wrong. Oh, shit, I didn't even notice that! Damn it! What? <laughs> nah, just trying to keep you on your toes. Oh, okay, thank God. I was like, oh, fuck. I can't put like, eraser marks on this now, and if it's in pen, I can't just wipe that out. They'll look awful. Now all I have to do is seal it and put it in his mailbox. Do we have a wax seal? Because otherwise this ain't going to be anything. Can I seal it with tape? No! You need a wax seal! Yes. That's not authentic enough. I have an idea. I'll be right back. She's just going to go like grab a candle, but... I never thought about that. Just get a candle, pour the wax of the candle, and then just imprint that way. You'd still, you'd still need the presser thing, though, is the problem. Amanda leaves the room and returns with a candle, a lighter, and a small piece of wood. Knew it! Huh. You gotta have a wax seal. 
She lights the candle, which starts to burn down and form a pool of melted wax. What's the other thing? Amanda pours some of the wax onto the folded letter and expertly presses a small piece of wood into it. She lets it dry for a second and pulls the wood away, revealing... Here it is! Your sigil! Oh, Jesus, what's my sigil? A little kitten with a bow on its head! Awesome! <laughs> yes! Scrapbooking stuff always comes in the cl in clutch. In clutch? Clutch. Well, I guess all there is to do is deliver it to his doorstep now, huh? What was his wax seal now that I think about it? They didn't get so me tell me what the logo was or anything. Hmm. Oh, I thought we were getting a carrier pigeon to do it. Hmm. I already called my guy. What? Hmm. I have a pigeon guy. Marcus has the good pigeons. <laughs> Don't get your pigeons from Anthony. They're no good. I don't want to know if any of this is true. <laughs> it's probably not. I head outside and walk over to Damien's house. I slip the letter into the slot in his door and go back home. Mission accomplished. Now we play the waiting game. In like two seconds, we're going to get a ding on dad book. I guarantee it. Never mind. I thought like in two seconds, we just bing dad book. Or like immediately another letter into our door or something. That'd be, that'd be cool. The night finally rolls around when I'm supposed to meet Damien. The next day, he had left another beautifully crafted letter thanking me for mine and agreeing to the evening. <clears throat> Amanda helps me pick out a nice outfit, and I show up to the theater a little bit early. It's a chilly night, and the theater is kind of crowded, but it's still nice. Okay. Now, from how this game has currently been doing its whole thing with um, visuals not corresponding to what's written down there... I'm going to assume I'm not in a nice outfit like it suggests. I'm just in my regular clothes. That's my subject. If, I, if it does put me in a nice outfit, hey, point for the game. If it doesn't, I'm going to be very upset. Because this game, I hate that it keeps doing like, this is what's going on. But it doesn't visually show you when it very easily could. How do you do? I just... Why the fuck was there thunder? Jesus. I jump at the sound of his voice and turn around to see Damien right behind me. See? I'm in my normal clothes. It would be very easy to just change. Whatever. <sighs> you almost gave me a heart attack. How long were you there for? Ah! Good God, that was fucking loud. I don't know. I just walked up. My apologies for frightening you. Yeah, did you have something to do with the fucking as well? Jesus. Was that thunder? Is it gonna rain soon? I didn't hear anything. Oh, okay. What? Hmm. Oh my! What? <sighs> Regardless, the hour grows close. <laughs> Shall we take our seats in the cinema? I must thank you again for purchasing our tickets. Oh. Please, allow me to repay the deed and Sour Patch Kids, or perhaps Milk Duds. Let's do it. We get in line to buy snacks. As we're waiting, I hear a familiar voice behind us. Oh god. Oh god. Please don't be another dad. Ugh, my dad's here. Oh, it's his son! Okay, that's kind of awkward, too. I turn around to find Lucian standing a few feet behind us with a gaggle of goth- of other goth kids. I only see Lucian. No other gaggle, but okay. Oh. Lucian, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were coming to the theater. I'm glad to see you spending some quality time with your friends. Whatever, Dad. Hmm. And what movie will you be attending tonight? My friends are making me see some kids movie about talking animals. I don't really care about it. Oh. Well, I do hope you enjoy your evening. We'll be watching Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies. What? You? Watching that? Yeah, I thought Damien would enjoy it. Hmm. <laughs> Good luck with that, Dad. Is Damien not into that? Would he have been more into the comic, the romantic comedy? Probably, now that I think about it. Lucian rejoins his friends, I look over to Damien. Good luck with what? <sighs> it's nothing. My son loves to tease. We wait in line for a little longer, and Damien buys us snacks. He seems a little nervous. I wonder what's wrong. Huh. Damien and I take our seats and settle in for previews. Glancing at him, I can see that he's sweating profusely and gripping his armrest. Well, I mean, he's also in a dress shirt with a... What is this called? An ascot? I think a vest and his cape so he'd be a little hot also he's got his long hair which I, I know from experience it makes you a little hot 
<coughs> Excuse me. Everything okay? We guys not even started yet. Vampires, huh? Everything okay? It's, everything is perfectly fine. Huh. I'm so uh, excited for this film. He's into romantic comedies, isn't he? You you would think he's into vampire stuff from his how his outlook is and everything, but that stereotyping. We just stereotyped Damien. Well, don't I feel like shit? I'm a devoted patron of the arts, especially the scary arts. The scarier the art, the better. Oh, he's just not into horror. Okay. Do you have a favorite horror movie? Oh, no. <laughs> I, uh, of course I have a favorite horror movie. Mine is Halloween Town. Terrifying. Oh, interesting. Hmm. That's odd. I don't seem to remember Halloween Town being that scary. I would expect him to bring up some sort of strange foreign horror film that I'd never heard of. Like Human Centipede. Damien's knuckles are turning white. It looks like he's about to rip the armrest off. He's uncomfortable. Let's go watch the romantic comedy. Wait a second. Damien, are you afraid of horror movies? I am too. IRL, I am too. I hate horror movies. Horror games, horror movies, I hate them. Can't stand them. I... You must be joking. I love horror movies. The light's dim for the film. Is he gonna, like, grab our hand if can grip the shit out of it for the entirety? My, That's my guess. Ah! Good fucking god. That was ridiculous. Damien screams. The lights went out. We need to get out of this theater now. I apologize. <laughs> I was thinking about something far scarier than this movie, uh, which, which is not scary at all. And we settle in as the film starts. I offer Damien some li licorice, and he takes one. I take note of how much his hands are shaking. I'm going to turn down the volume, because if Damien's going to scream or do something like that again, that's going to be ridiculous. Ah! See, I'm glad I turned that down, because even that was a bit loud. The title flashes across the screen in bloody letters, Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies. Hmm. A pale man with long silver hair, glittering red eyes, and well-oiled abs sits up in a coffin. Romulus Bad Blood? Okay. Awaken my coven! Two more vampires slide the tops of their stone coffins onto the floor. Brother, is it time? Yes, husband, but also mortal enemy. It is... <laughs> yes, husband, but also mortal enemy. It is time. The three look at each other, and then to the camera. For the Vampire Crusade. And they say that all in unison. Oh boy. This rules. This is cheesy as fluff. The trio of vampires flies off to the night as foreboding organ music plays in the distance. I somehow get lost in the movie. As dumb as it sounded, it's actually a pretty fun flick. Something makes me think it's not. Ah! Oh, god damn it. We get to a tense moment of the movie where Romulus Trueblood sits at a truce, truce meeting with the general of the human army, whose wife Romulus has fallen in love with. Romulus, it is good to finally meet you. General, I agree. It's good to finally blood you. What the fuck? Stop. What? Ramulus leaps out and slashes the general's throat. Blood splatters over everything, including the camera. It has <sighs> to. Damien screams again, reflexively grasping my hand. Knew it! Called it. I immediately blush, forgetting about any vampires or blood or vampiric blood. Oh my! Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Hmm. Damien retracts his hand and places it back in his lap. Hmm. I was writing a novel in my head about blood magic, and I got to an extremely scary section. Damien goes back to quietly stressing over it, out over the movie. It's kind of cute, and he won't admit that he's afraid of it. I wish you would hold my hand again. <laughs> Aww! <laughs> Maybe I could do something to try to make him feel more comfortable. I've got it! I will do what all dads do best. Talk during the movie. <laughs> God damn it. Tell a dad joke, point out plot hole, ask what's happening. Uh... Point out plot hole. Did you notice how that guard fired seven bullets, but his gun only holds six bullets? Ah. Uh. Yes! That is absolutely unforgivable from a filmmaking standpoint. It's act that actually is. It's almost unwatchable. 
Oh, there's a little glitch there. It's funny how it's so much easier to point out tiny mistakes in the work of others than it is to actually go create your own thing, huh? That is so true. It is so true. I need to I need to save that. It's funnier to point out the tiny mistakes of other people's work than to go create your own thing. That that needs to be on a t-shirt. Hey, look! It's that anachronism. Something like that. Mm. The rest of the movie goes by relatively smoothly, with only a few whispers from Damien. Maybe he would like the romantic comedy better. Yeah, I'm starting to think so. Did we get to choose if we picked the romantic comedy or the vampire movie? No, I don't think we did. I think it picked the vampire movie regardless. We get to the final scene in the movie where Romulus, Bad Blood, and the General's wife embrace each other in his crypt. It appears that the true vampire crusade was the vampire crusade in our hearts. Our cold, unbeaten. Hearts. Romulus and the general's wife begin making out hard. Ha! Ah! Stop yelling. <laughs> the film fades to black and the end appears on the screen, but then it hard cuts to the Demetrius and his rival lover, Camellia, who watch the two from afar. Huh. Oh no, twist ending. Our bloodline has been pure for a thousand years. Romulus has betrayed us by loving a human woman. It'll only be a short time before. The next Vampire Crusade Evil 3 Evil Must Die Again! More thunder, more ominous organs, the movie fades out again, and a bloody question mark now accompanies the end. Ugh! It's so bad. Damien and I walk out of the movie theater and miss throngs of chattering moviegoers. He's a little more pale than I remember, but otherwise he survived the encounter. He even seems kind of invigorated. <laughs> what an interesting film. While the premise admittedly struck me as pedestrian, I was intrigued by its harrowing love story and great attention to detail in regards to the vampiric lore. Yeah, it was pretty good. A lot more vampiric titties than I thought there would be. Oh, boy. <clears throat> oh. Oh, come. The night is young. Let's take a stroll. Hmm. Damien's making a good point of not telling me where he's taking me. Still, I'm enjoying the walk and the cool night air. Being alone here with Damien is a lot better than being in a crowded theater. Lovely night, isn't it? <clears throat> as lovely as the company, yes. Mmm, smooth. <clears throat> he thinks I'm love. He thinks I'm lovely! Oh my god! Damn, okay, here comes a smooth response. <clears throat> Thanks, cool, okay. Thanks. <clears throat> no, oh god, thank god that was the right one. No problem. <clears throat> Crushed it. We both stand there feeling a little awkward. I'm sure I'm sure I am one smooth operator. Are you getting a little hungry? We can maybe stop off and grab something to eat. Ah. Worry not, friend. I have a plan. We turn the corner and are greeted by the gates of a cemetery. What? He did put in his dad book he likes walking through the cemetery, so I guess that's what we're about to fucking do. Are we going in there? Oh. A little bit of Victorian flavor, Torsten. Trust me. Oh boy. This freaking music kicked up all of a sudden. Jesus. I'm a bit nervous, but Damien hasn't led me wrong yet. I follow his lead. Holy shit, this music really fucking kicked up. Good god. I don't think this is the right type of music for walking through a cemetery. Just, just saying. I follow his lead as we walk into the cemetery. Statues of angels stare down at us as we follow a path through the faded faded tombstones. As we crest a small hill, we get a beautiful view of the city. The night lights sparkle around us. I gotta hand it to him. For being in a cemetery, this is strangely romantic. Well, if it has that kind of view, then yeah. Picnicking, picnicking in graveyards is an old Victorian tradition. An appropriate finish to an evening after a vampiric movie, wouldn't you say? Can't argue that. With a flourish, Damien produces a blanket and a picnic basket. Has he been carrying it this whole time? Like, into the movie theater, too? Wait. Yeah, wait, where are you hiding that? Ugh. Under my cloak. I don't think you could hide it there. Oh. Right, yeah, I know, it doesn't look like you could hide a picnic basket and such there. Damien unfolds the blanket and we both sit down, gazing out at the city lights. He produces a bottle of red wine and a fine selection of cheeses. <laughs> In the Victorian era, there were no public art galleries, parks, or bonnetical gardens to speak of. One rural graveyard became a more popular alternative to church burials. They became the only place that people could see beautiful plant life and fine sculptures. 
Okay. I'm starting to get the picture now. That makes sense. This is pretty nice. I have a question, though. How are you so okay with being in a graveyard, but you had trouble handling a scary movie? Maybe a bit far. Can I stop this music? Because... No? Okay. It's... This music is really annoying. Like, for this scene and everything, this music is really loud and really off-putting for this scene. Oh my! I... I wasn't. He sighs deeply. Okay. Yes, I was extremely scared by that movie. I was not writing a book about blood magic in my head. I just... I've never been good at those. I just feel as if because of how I look and act, people expect me to love horror films. So I must play the part. Truth be told, I don't know if I had the con constitution for them at times. See? We stereotyped him. Damien, I'm so sorry. If I had known, I would have suggested another movie. <laughs> it's quite alright. I actually did find myself enjoying this one, thanks to your help. Oh. Graveyards, however. I think there's something rather beautiful about death. Cemeteries are traditionally built away from cities, away from the realm of the living, and it keeps us rather separated from it. Oh. To acknowledge death and become comfortable with it, I think, gives us certain intimate knowledge of ourselves. Uh -huh. To sit amongst generations of those who came before us, to be truly alive in the midst of so much death, brings me great comfort. Uh. Death helps me appreciate life, to savor every second. We sit and enjoy our food and wine. I don't feel scared anymore. Never thought I'd be comfortable sitting alone in a graveyard at night, but I actually feel very peaceful. You're not alone, you were Damien. Suddenly, it doesn't seem like we're alone. Off the distance, I see a shadowy figure in the trees. See, this music is much calmer and quieter. Thank you. I, I get the I get the feeling of the music I was trying to but trying to make, but it was too big and boisterous and awkward. This is okay. What is that? It's either. I have three picks. It's either one Amanda, two Lucian. Luciassen, can't remember his name, or one of the other dads. Ah! I'm not sure. Huh. It noticed us. I'm paralyzed with fear as it begins lumbering slowly towards us, its shape taking more animal form, more feral. I look to Damien for help, but he's just as afraid and transfixed as I am. Maybe it's a bear? Could be a bear. Maybe it's that one dad that has like the beard and such. I want to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. The creature's getting closer, moving faster. I think it might just be Damien's son playing a trick on his dad. Ah! With his friends. Woof. Huh. Oh. Oh. It's a dog. As it finally comes into the light, the friendliest, dumbest little Boston Terrier I've ever seen pulls its owner towards us. Uh -huh. The dog trots over to Damien, sniffs at its hand. Or at his hands. Damien looks ecstatic. He ruffles the dog's fur happily. Hmm. What a beautiful dog. Hey. We both look up. Not expecting to see. Is it the biker guy? The bad... I think it's going to be either the biker guy or just for a random twist of events, Mr. Vega. That's my two guesses. It's biker guy. Caught it. I figured, like, with the collar and stuff, it might be biker guy, but as, like, a really qu weird, quick, like, quick fricks it might be mr vega i don't know but anyway it was back guy robert that's his name thanks <laughs> robert what are you doing out here on this lovely evening <sighs> hunting cryptids what <laughs> what oh what <clears throat> i didn't know you had a dog hey. this isn't my dog mm -hmm. i found her wandering the street put a leash on her now we're walking around this graveyard together okay mm. Hunting cryptids. What the fuck is a cryptid? Oh. Damien and I share a look. Oh. May I give her a treat? Oh. Sure. I wouldn't give her cheese, though. I... Not to worry. Damien reaches into the depths of his cloak and produces a small dog treat. What else is he keeping in there? Does that cloak have fucking pockets? It has to. The dog laughs up the treat and crunches away, tail wagging furiously. Damien continues to smooth down her fur. Mm-hmm. Thanks. <laughs> my absolute pleasure. Damon shakes the dog's paw. Huh. Lovely to meet you, my friend. May our paths cross again. Robert and his dog disappear into the darkness again. Damon stares after them. I didn't know you liked dogs. 
The Victorians loved dogs, actually. Most Victorian women of high fashion would always be accompanied by a small dog, such as a terrier or a Maltese. I, uh, think big dogs are nice, too. Yeah, man, dogs are cool. I do believe we've had enough excitement for one night. What say we make our way home? Damien ho hops to his feet and extends a hand to help me up. I gladly take it as my knees aren't what they used to be. You're not that fucking old. He packs up his pack picnic basket and leads us out to the graveyard. Out of the graveyard. As we begin the walk home, I take one last look at the cemetery. It really is beautiful. And now after like all this text and stuff, I can kind of see where my dude's coming from. It would kind of make sense that way. Like a proper gentleman, Damien walks me to my doorstep. Stop with this music! It doesn't fit. It's awkward. It's too big and boisterous and loud. It, you need some calmer music. This is awful. Thank you ever so kindly for your company tonight. Damien, it was my pleasure. Torsten, if you allow me, it would bring me great joy to offer you a token of my affection. Uh. Damien reaches into his cloak and pulls out a folded, monogrammed handkerchief. He presses it into my hand. Wow, thank you, Damien. I'll use this to dry my tears for those I have lost. I can't wait to sneeze on this. I'm going to wave this at passing ships. I'm, I'm going to wave this at passing ships. I hope... Uh, can we sneeze into this? this is wrong? I'll use it to dry my tears for those I've lost. I'm going to wave this at passing ships. Ah, correct. I approve. Huh. Damien shuffles his feet. Hmm. I just wanted to say that this is rare to find someone like you. Someone who is open to my eccentricities. Damien, I know just how you feel. Trust me. Trust me, I know just how you feel. It's rare to find someone who is open to my eccentricities. Uh. It's, although I will say mine are not as crazy as yours. It's nice to find someone that accepts me for who I am because I am a very mixed up weird ball. It's nice to feel so accepted. Thank you. I really connect with Damien on that. Like it's like real talk. I'm a weird person. And I have a lot of weird things about me. Like I watch my little pony. I'm really into magic, the gathering and nerdy stuff like that. And like, I do streaming and YouTube a lot and it takes up a lot of my spare time and I'm not working. And, like, I like to do random stuff for... And I do big things. I like to dress up in costumes and put on skits for my friends or, like, people I'm interested in and stuff. I do a lot of weird stuff. And it's very rare to find someone that, like, not only is accepting of it, but also, like, accompanies me in doing so. So I can really I can really connect with Damien on that. And, like, it is nice. And it is really nice to find someone who accepts you for who you are and not... And that's alone itself, but it's even better to find someone who accepts you and is just as weird and as eccentric as you are. Because then it really makes you feel accepted and like you guys are something. So. Anyways, real, real talk aside, just, just wanted to put that out there. Damien gives my hand a quick squeeze. Damien blushes and hastily retracts his hand. Um, I must take my leave. Good night. Before I can say anything else, he's gone. Huh. I unlock the door and step inside. That would have been a prime moment for a kiss. Like a whirlwind, Amanda runs from the window and plops down on the couch trying to look nonchalant. Nonchalant. Huh? Hey, Dad, what's up? <laughs> Were you watching me from the window? No. I was just, uh, hmm. okay, yes, how was the movie? Lots of vampire titties, <laughs> told you. But as it turns out, Damien is scared. Huh. Wait, Amanda doesn't need to know that. Okay, between me and Damien. Sc sc scary cool. Yep, he he's so cool, it's scary. Nice save, Torsten. <laughs> Did you know the graveyards used to be a place to throw parties? Ah. I think I'm misremembering mis that. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty punk. Also, we saw a dog. Definitely thought it was a werewolf for a moment, though. <laughs> Minute, whatever. How can you be so sure it wasn't a werewolf? How can you be so sure I'm not a werewolf? And how can I be so sure you're not a werewolf? You are my offspring. <laughs> Amanda's eyes narrow. <laughs> I don't trust you. 
Nor I, you. Hmm. We make intense, wary eye contact for a second. Hmm. Anyway, I'm calling it for the night. Don't stay up too late, will ya? I'll try not to howl at the moon past midnight. Fucking better not. Dad tip 36, trust no one. Okay. Date complete! Shaboom shakalaka! What kind of rating do we get? Are you S-Rank! familiar with the works of Corey Feldman? He simply slayed in the Lost Boys. I don't know Corey Feldman. I know Lost Boys. But the only Lost Boy I remember from Lost Boys was, I think his name was Alex White. He played. He played in the. He played in. I think it was Bill and Ted's Adventures with, um, the guy who plays John Wick. What's his name? I think it's Alex White. Not not the guy who plays John Wick. But yeah, I think it was Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. It was the guy, the actor that plays John Wick, and then an actor from the Lost Boys was also in it as the main thing, and I think his name was Alex White. So, I don't know the character he references, I know Lost Boys, and the only actor I know from Lost Boys was Alex White. So, S rank! Boom shakalaka! Last time we only got an A rank. I don't know why we didn't get an S rank last time. Can't remember what we did wrong. But hey! A rank is good, S rank is superb! Mmm! <clears throat> good stuff. Dad joke, Mandels, Edwardian, Victorian, Blood, and Dog. Perfect. <clears throat> Achievement progress. Interview with the vampire. Two out of three. Nice. <laughs> nice. Well, it's been a long day. It has been a long day, and that is where we're going to be ending this episode for Dream Daddy. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're almost done. There's only one more episode to go. I'm not going to be playing every single dad. I know some people are going to be like, you're, you're playing Dream Daddy. You have to date every single one of the dads. No. No. I, I The game is enjoyable. I like the game. But I don't like the game enough to go through and date every single one of the dads three times over. That's just, that's way too much that I want to, that's way too much energy I want to give this game. Like I said, I like this game, but I'm only going to play one dad and I'm picking the favorite dad that I like, which is Damien. And everything's going swell with Damien. So we're going to stick with one, one only. Otherwise, this will just be, this will become over 50 episodes or of Dream Daddy, and I don't want to do that. That's ridiculous. That's absurd. So, like, and like, there are a lot of, I mean, a lot of YouTubers will do video game series, and like, they'll have episode like 100 or something of the of like the exact same game, and like the exact same kind of thing going on, and it just gets so redundant and boring over time, like. To, to clarify, there there are video game, there are YouTubers like, I'm going to use Spazzy for an example, who's like 95% of his content is League of Legends related, and he has over 100 episodes of like funny moments on League of Legends or stream moments of League of Legends, he has over 100 of each of them, but each one is unique and edited in a new way with, with cuts and visuals and stuff to make them entertaining every single time. Whereas some YouTubers don't do any editing whatsoever, they literally start recording, stop recording for 30 minutes of a game, and then just upload that daily. And for me personally, some people might enjoy that, me personally, I find it really, it just gets boring and redundant and like very, very little effort put into the videos at that point in time. So I don't want to do that, I want to play this game, keep it short and sweet, one dad, and we're done. If you guys want to watch other dads in different YouTube videos, there are thousands out there you can find, no problem. So, you can do that. Also, um, my friend, Your Little Ghoul, she's a YouTuber and a streamer. She's doing Dream Dad's uh, videos right now, and I'm pretty sure she's going through every single dad. So, if you want, I'll link her channel down below to her Dream Dadding videos, so you can guys can watch those. I'm only going to be doing Damien, and then we're done with this game. So, next episode will be the final episode of Dream Daddy. I'm assuming, I'm assuming it ends once you get three dates in. That would make sense. Um, you'll see by the title, if it says end in the title, then there you go. If it doesn't, then there's more to go. But, anyway. That's it. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, tell your friends. If you didn't, you tell me. Have yourself a good one, everybody. Score!